Okay, I thought I would do a short video about Fisher schematics and schematics in general, I guess. Because uh, Fisher schematics, depending upon the time period, tended to change. The early ones were horrible, the later ones were less horrible. Uh, this one we're going to look at today uh, is an X100 integrated amplifier. That's the picture of it on the manual. This is the serial numbers this manual is good for, and there could be changes depending upon if it's an earlier unit or a later unit. Um, not necessarily, but very often. Now this is the early X100, made around 1959, I think 59, and it is tube rectified. There is nothing solid state about this amp. Uh, some tube amps have um, you know, diode power supply, not this one. It's got a GZ34 rectifier, uh, which is a 5AR4. And it is completely tube rectified, and it's a completely tube amp. There was no traces of anything solid state in here. Okay, let's get looking at this thing. Now, basically, tube amps have output transformer. Here's your two output tubes. The other output transformer, these are two output tubes, and your power transformer. Now, this schematic is made very nice. As you can see, it's basically split down the middle. Here's one channel, and here's your other channel. And that's basically what's going on here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. Here is the outlet. So your power comes in, goes to your primary, to the power transformer, it's 117 volts AC, and that breaks your voltage up into what you're going to need for the amp. Here's your 6.3 volt AC filament supply for your output tubes. The output tubes <coughs> are, are amplifying, <coughs> excuse me, amplifying a large signal, so you can get away with, with AC on the filaments. Um, the preamp tubes, on the other hand, are very sensitive, and these are the preamp filaments. These are DC, and I'm going to show you how that is derived in a minute. But um, that's one of the secondaries, is the 6.3 volts AC filament voltage. You have your, of course, the, the supply to the uh, rectifier tube. And they're not great on voltages on the schematic. It, they're okay, but it could have been better. Some of the stuff you gotta you got to trace. Um... Anyway, so you have your, as you can see, from one winding to the other is 700 and, uh, what is that, 730 volts. Yeah, this way, that's another thing. This stuff is nothing to be fooled with. This is the filament, a separate winding for the filament, just for this tube. See, it says V11, and this tube is V11. See, GZ34, 5AR4. That's the American designation. That's the European designation. And here is basically after you... You got your first resistor, they don't label it resistor numbers, but everything's on the parts list. See, we shoot over here to the parts list, I mean, everything is on there, so you have to worry about it. A couple of things I labeled, just for the sake of clarity. So, you have your rectifier tube, here's your output, and this is where you have your 384 volts to do, you know, whatever it does, goes up to your um, output tubes, that's your, that's your output power, basically. And another dropping resistor, and you have another one, you can see it's slightly less voltage. And then another dropping resistor, and slightly less voltage, and, you know, la di da di da all the way down the line. Um, when you see this dotted line around these capacitors, that means this is in one package. So this is one of those silver can caps, and these are the two sections. And as you can see, the plus is the part where it's like, like the letter T, this curved, is the negative. So this is ground. This is this is a ground. They're very bad on showing this stuff, but this is this is actually uh, uh, ground. See, because if you follow it, it goes this way. It goes up this way. You see how it attaches here? Yeah. Well, this big long thing is a ground. Because if you follow it all the way down, all the way down to the end, you see it's a ground. 
obviously it's connected only where you see the dot where there's crossing like this this is not connected it's crossing over that's connected so this big long thing of a jig is a ground sometimes what i'll do i'll actually draw a ground here just to make it easy so i don't get confused so that's why this is a ground okay this is another filter cap so you have one section two section three sections this section's 40 microfarads these are high voltage because they have to filter the power supply this one is not high voltage this is part of the bias circuit which we'll get into in a second okay now let's jump up to the bias here's your bias adjustment by the way this pink thing that's a pot okay now this is what they call automatic bias I'm sorry, yes, automatic bias, cathode bias. And it's even a little more complicated than that. Here's the cathodes to the output tubes. These are 6BQ5 EL84s. So here are the cathodes. Okay. And you notice they're connected together. No, those are the grids. I'm sorry. Where's the cathodes? Here's the cathodes. I'm sorry. Here's the cathodes. These are the plates. These are the cathodes. The cathode's got that little hook on it. Okay, here's the cathodes. See, 44 volts, low voltage. So these are connected together, as you can see. This comes down. It will connect to the other two cathodes and continue on its way down. Now, this has to go to ground somehow. If it was fixed bias, it would go directly to ground. Automatic bias, it has to pass through a resistor. Which, you know, I'm tracing this. Instead of a resistor, I'm just moving the paper by mistake here, is instead of a resistor, we're going through V1, V6, V7, and V2 filaments. Now, these are 12AX7s, which are two tubes in one. So you have two filaments, and they're all in series. So that's what enables the filaments to be heated by DC voltage. And then you have to also have a capacitor, and this is it right here. It's, that's why you have this small capacitor. It's 100 microfarads. It's only rated like 150 volts. And the voltage here is low. Well, the, volt, the, volt is at, the, the voltage at this capacitor right here, C15A, is very low. Don't confuse that with this. This is a power supply here. This is something else. This is not that. This is part of your output tube circuit. Okay? goes over here and down here into these resistors and then through the pot it's a little complicated it's, it's kind of complicated and here at 6.3 volts of course is your pilot lamp across the same filament supply and these are your uh, this v3 and v8 those are your driver tubes they get away with uh, ac um, filaments on those two so that's this one where is it this one right here, which is a 7247. Just think that highlighter is kind of dark. And there's the other one up there. This one right here. Again, it's like a 12x, excuse me, like a 12x7, two tubes in one. Okay. Now, I started all of this assuming you at least have a small handle on the symbols on a schematic knowing that this is a resistor this is a capacitor by the way on this on this schematic and you don't see this that often on Fisher schematics <clears throat> this is not an electrolytic <clears throat> but they're showing polarity what this actually is is, is the foil, which end of the foil, the inside of the foil, the outside of the foil, that's all this means. When it's referring to an electrolytic, that's the polarity, and this is the negative, and that's the positive. And you can remember that because this is shaped almost like a plus, as opposed to the curved end, which is the negative. Okay, as we proceed here, let's look at some other things. Um... You will notice on this schematic, this dotted line, hmm? right, hmm? goes in here like this, that's, a, that's funny, because they're telling you this is not in this, 
And what this is, is PC6. What is PC6? That's a printed circuit. This is all in one package. Anything inside the dotted lines is in a ceramic package. It looks like it, it could be the size of a matchbook or uh, slightly smaller. And it's usually, and usually it's always, this light brown mustard color. And on this schematic, they were kind enough to tell you what's in the damn thing. Because I had a Fisher preamp one time that this was physically broken. That's it. Once you break that, it's over. And I saw they had all the parts labeled. I actually built one. You can actually build this by copying these parts, anything that's within the box. And you make your connections appropriately, as, it, as, as it's shown there. Here's one of those places where the... They don't show you this is ground until, you know, about a mile down that way. So I just wrote it in. Okay, up here, see it says volume B, R55B. That's the two-section volume control. This is the B section. And you go way up here, and here's the A section. R55, it's your two channels. They're linked together. So when you turn the control, both channels, right, the volume goes up and down together. We all know this. Okay, very good. And that's what that is. This is the balance control. Same thing. It's a dual pot. Two pots on one shaft. And that's what this designates. See balance B. R60B. We go up here and mark it so I can find it easy. R60A. So this is one channel. This is the other channel. Okay. One thing I want to mention about this rectifier tube. If you have a bad filter capacitor, bad meaning shorted, not open. Open is rarely a problem. You're just going to hear hum. But if it's shorted, you're dumping your power supply to ground. Remember, this is ground over here. And um, if one of these is shorted, you will fry this tube in a millisecond. Uh, if you've ever seen a flash bulb go off, this will pop a lot quicker than any flash bulb you've ever seen. And you kiss a very expensive tube goodbye. That's why if you're not sure of the condition of your amp, always use um, one of these modern cheap jobs. Never a Chinese one, because they're not rated properly. They arc, they, they're, they're junk, at least the ones I've tried. A Russian one is fine. Uh, Sovtech is good. Uh, Svetlana, outrageous. Any any Russian 5AR4, this way, if, the, if this is bad, one of these is bad, you'll, you'll, you'll pop a $12 tube, maybe whatever they cost, $12, instead of an $80 tube for a new old stock uh, GC34 alright now down at the bottom on this particular schematic this is interesting I should have mentioned this before I'm going to mention it now if you're looking for a part let's say you're looking for uh, R49 R49 it means it's up there somewhere this is the parts locator you better than go nuts looking for it so R49 should be up this way somewhere okay so where you see the part number in this case, again, we're looking at R49. We're going to go up and up and just keep looking. And there it is, R49. Right there. Right there. See, we go straight down. R49. I mean, in the relative area, you know, like within a, within a fraction of an inch of each other. And that's what all of this means. Okay, see, R47AB, that means it's a pot. Those are the two sections of the pot. And it goes straight across, touch all the parts. Okay, of course, here's your legend telling you about the switches, <clears throat> what uh, it does in what position, starting from, if you go to extreme counterclockwise, the position, that's position one. You know, and you go from there. It's a little nightmarish if you have to do this, but if you have to, you have to. Here's the basic flow. Let me see, back out a little bit here. Here's the whole schematic. So here's your basic flow. It goes this way. Um, phono stuff is, of course, going to get put through the uh, phono tubes. It's an additional amplification stage. And as you can see in your phono stage, look what we have. Printed circuits. These are the phono equalization. That's what this is all about. That's your phono equalization. See? It says it right there, equalization. You got a switch and all that other jazz for phono tape and blah blah blah. And there's the other channel.
that's the other channel. And normally, the signal flows into the tube grid. Let's find an input here. Yeah, right there. See, it's coming from the select the switch through dropping resistors and into the grid. And this is the output right there. And that's half of the tube. And here's the other half of the tube. See? Here's the input. Here's the output. And they work in tandem. And that's how the amplifier works. Easier said than done. Scratch filter. Yeah, that's a high filter. Rumble filter. It's a low filter. So when you flip that on, see it's in the off position right now? So if you trace this in the off position, your signal's kind of, here's the plate of the tube. This is where the signal comes out of. This is the input. This is the plate. The plate's got the high voltage on it. And if we could find it somewhere, if we trace it, it's, this, is the, this is the power supply. So before you go to the next stage, you've got to have a blocking capacitor, which is what this is. That blocks your high voltage. These, these are the things you want to make sure don't leak in an amplifier. There should be no voltage here. You should have, you know, your power supply is here, no, but, the, but the AC passes through it. That's what a capacitor does. It blocks DC, passes AC. So it passes the music signal, but blocks the power supply. And it goes, you know, along its way. Anyway, down here, it goes into here. Here's your, here's your capacitor. And this is the off position. So it goes this way and goes along its merry way. When you switch it on, you're breaking this connection. You're forcing it through this capacitor. You see, which is probably, they're not labeled, but it's probably a smaller capacitor than this one, which is going to um, reduce the, um, the low frequencies. That's how your rumble filter works. And, of course, the scratch filter works in a very similar way. Here's another printed circuit. And I marked all the tubes. Space expander, that's another story. That's not for this video. Well, it is, is a, an echo box that uh, Fisher made a lot of money with. And that's your basic amplifier. Let's look at the output tubes. Here's your driver. Okay. So, here's to the output tube. Here's your blocking capacitor to block the DC. See, 167 volts. You don't want that going into the grid. Your tube will glow like a cherry. So here's your blocking capacitor. Well, these are these are coupling capa capacitors. These are got to make sure these don't leak. None of them should leak, but this is most critical. And here's your other one, right there. Here's the blocking capacitor. And these are your wrapper tubes. And this is where the uh, the plates go right into the output transformer on each end. And uh, here is your output. The common on this particular ramp is grounded. And then you get your 4, 8, and 16 ohm taps. Okay, so that's one out the transformer, see T1. And here's your other one, T2. Sometimes you see different part numbers for T1 and T2 in the same amp. Normally all that means is uh, the, the length of the wires off the shelf. Is one of them is longer than the other uh, for the way it sits in the amp. Because uh, obviously the uh, output transformers have to be the same. The stereo amp, they got to be the same. All right, let's see. What else can we talk about here on the AC line of a lot of these amps? And I'm surprised I don't see it here, but it's always a good idea to put a small capacitor, put 0.01, right across the power line. Normally we do it right here across the outlet. One this way. And then one going from the outlet to a ground. Now, obviously, I can't see a ground here, but in the amp, I assure you, there'll be a ground nearby. And that's, that stops a lot of uh, line noise and all kinds of other jazz. should never, ever ground the chassis of a tube amp. Never, ever ground the chassis of a tube amp. It will cause all sorts of issues, ground loops and uh, other junk. So this is your basic schematic. Um, I hope this shed a little bit of light on it. Um, these are switches. Obviously, the switch is open. It's a double pole switch. Here's one pole. Here's the other pole. And they throw it together. That's why this is it's a power switch. Okay, it's, power, it's got two sections. One goes to the outlets. One goes to your transformer to power the amp. And here's your fuse. That's what the F1 means. That's your fuse. And again, here's all your voltages. This is the output of your of your rectifier tube. This is the AC going in. 
This is the DC coming out. What else could we talk about? I think we just about got all the basics on this baby. Um, we'll, I'd like to do a receiver one next because that involves, you know, the, the, the fixed bias with the output tubes. This one you don't have to worry. You just adjust the pot. Um, I forget the manual tells you to adjust this to like, what does it say here? 44 volts. 40 volts is a little better. They run a little cooler. That's a little, you know, and you could do 44 volts, but at 40 volts it runs a little cooler, and you really don't introduce any distortion. It's it's good, and it get a little more life out of the tubes. Um, sometimes you'll see EL84, 6PQ5, 7189, or sometimes strictly 7189. They're the same, and they're not the same. The 7189 can take uh, a much higher plate voltage. If you use a B 6PQ5 where 7189 is called for, may work for a while, but probably won't last very long. It's certainly not as long as uh, as the correct tube. So that's that. you got your parts list, all these parts. If you're going to work on one of these things and you got to troubleshoot an area, it's smart to just label all the resistors, look up what the heck R33 is, do like I did down here. Get an extremely fine pen. Red is nice, it contrasts good. I marked this capacitor because this is part of the bias supply, this thing. I'm sorry, it's not the bias supply, part of the power supply. This is, see, get confused, they're so close together. This is the bias supply. That's why I circle this to show it's different. It's a high voltage capacitor. See, it says 150 volts here. This is like, I don't know, they call for like a 300 volt capacitor. They, they really gave it a lot of headroom. Fisher was good by doing that. They gave their capacitors a lot of headroom when it comes to the voltage rating. you got to watch your voltage ratings with electrolytics. If you don't um, have the proper voltage rating, you'll, uh, you'll have serious issues. So that's about it. Um, see, it says down here what that legend is. The bottom is capacitors, and the one above it is resistors. So if you want to look for a capacitor, same way. You, know, you look at the parts list, you see 11, you go up there, boom, and eventually you'll find C11 somewhere along the line. Uh, let's see, what else? <clears throat> These things are jacks. Obviously, the inside of it is the pin, and this is the outside of it, which is normally the ground. The shielded cable, that's the ground. That's what all these things are. Okay. Uh, those are the jacks. We talked about the output, transformers, and I think that is that. Okay, until we do the next one, any questions, pop them in the um, comments below, or email me, fisherdoc at aol.com. I'd be very happy, very happy to answer any questions about this stuff. It's very important this knowledge gets disseminated. Um, I've done well over 600 of these things, and um, you, you learn a lot. Though. You don't memorize everything, but you can learn a lot. You really do learn a lot. And uh, becoming familiar with a specific brand has its advantages. This is the entire schematic over here. I photocopied this and taped it together. This, uh, this is how it comes. Let's back out here. This is how the schematic comes. You get your parts list. And you have the schematic in two pieces, because that's the way it's scanned in my computer. And here's your so-called service notes on adjusting the bias. Here's the tube layout. I mean, Fisher did pretty good. They did pretty good on these schematics. This, like I said, there's some that are better as you write your notes. What you screwed up or what you can't remember. But they did pretty good on these. There's some that are better. There's some. There's certainly plenty that are worse. The 50 schematics are horrific. There's nothing. No voltage is nothing. Okay. So that's it for now. Until next time. Thanks for watching.